because this is potentially the most important tip of them all is to make sure you're dealing with a reputable rescue so that uh, you can ask them questions. They're going to be upfront with you and uh, you have no concerns uh, going into finalizing that paperwork with them. Welcome to episode 10 of the Podoption Guide podcast. I'm your host, Bethany Muir, and this is your one-stop shop for the knowledge and advice you need to adopt and integrate the rescue dog of your dreams. So you may have noticed that I've been rotating through topics on the show to make sure that there's something for every one of you, no matter where you're at in your dog adoption journey. And uh, there's been the occasional tangent, and uh, some shows help with multiple aspects of that process. But in general, there's, you know, the search, the adoption, and the integration of your dog into your home. And those are kind of like the basic ways that I uh, section out uh, the process for adopting a dog. Well, Today we're talking about the dog adoption search and uh, even the decision to adopt versus purchasing a puppy. So I, I do often hear that people have fears about getting a rescue dog and that's why they go the other route. And uh, there are a lot of myths out there about rescue dogs and there are lots of things that can be the case for one scenario but not for another and so there's certainly ways to appropriately purchase a puppy and there's certainly ways to appropriately adopt a dog. So we're going to delve into one of the most common fears amongst people looking to adopt and this is adopting a rescue dog with pre-existing health conditions. So this could mean that they have undiagnosed issues, something that even like the rescue hasn't noticed and uh, is just underlying, or they have chronic issues or concerns that are not really disclosed to the adopter, whether that means it's a dishonest rescue or maybe they haven't even had the dog in their care long enough to find things out or the dog's in a kennel scenario. So maybe there's not as much monitoring, you know, when they're in a foster environment, you're just so much more likely to uh, show signs of things because they're getting more one-on-one care. So Uh, all those things, uh, seem to be a common fear amongst people looking to adopt. And, uh, certainly this is not an unfounded fear. I myself adopted two really sick cats. Those were the first, my first pets, um, that I was, you know, fully responsible for myself. And, uh, I had to euthanize them just months following adoption. They were both from a humane society And uh, I look back now and know that there were some questions that maybe could have helped me avoid adopting these sick cats because, you know, they really did fall ill quite soon after I got them. And I'm sure there were some things that had I asked particular questions, I might have had uh, different thoughts. But, you know, hindsight's 2020. So I have some great tips in today's episode to serve you well while you do your best to get a healthy new member of your family. But first things first, I do want to go through the scenario where people often remark that this fear, this fear of getting a dog with pre-existing health conditions is why they get a puppy. You know, it's a fresh start. Why would you get, you know, a a dog that could have all these problems when you can just get a fresh new puppy? Really, it's not dissimilar from people who choose to just buy a new car because they're too scared to get a used car that could have all these issues just waiting for you. Well, if you have ever had a used car before or a new car, you might know the fact that, uh, new cars can really have the issues that used cars have as well. So uh, I know lots of people who got a car fresh off the lot and then had constant issues with that car. Uh, And usually it was manufacturer things, right? They had to go back to the manufacturer for this or that and recalls this or that. But um, 
certainly it can crop up in either situation. So it's really not the best decision-making factor here as to whether you should be getting a puppy or get a rescue dog based on the fact that you're scared they are going to have pre-existing health conditions because really it can happen either way. So it's it's not untrue that it can be a fresh start in the sense that your puppy is a bit of a blank slate and you can train them from, you know, square one. Uh, but I've seen many puppy owners in the vet clinic, as I am an, a registered veterinary technician, uh, with chronic diarrhea and allergies and malocclusions, those are like teeth abnormalities, among other things, uh, just shortly after they settle into their new home. So, uh, you know, we see those clients, they happen quite frequently that people are dealing with those chronic issues right off the hop. So you really aren't safe either way. So let's get that myth dispelled. And let's just agree that no matter what way you choose to get a dog, there can be health concerns that arise. You will not always know what is coming down the pipe. So it's best to be prepared. Um, when I adopted those two sick cats, they had free trials of pet insurance from the Humane Society. And I always, always, always recommend that if you get a free trial of pet insurance, you activate it uh, because unless you activate it, it doesn't work. And uh, you see about keeping it on for at least the first few months to a year so that you can get a sense for what it's like to have pet insurance, how you feel, because I would say a lot of people feel utter relief knowing that they have that security with that coverage and that if anything were to happen, uh, they would have the ability to access funds um, or have have things covered so that they can uh, just get veterinary care for their pet as they need to without worrying about their funds. So uh, it can be a wonderful thing. It can still cost you money, so it, it's totally worth uh, looking into. But another important thing is that if you get the insurance from the moment you get them and there is no knowledge about any pre-existing health conditions uh, as you've seen or as the vet has declared that has seen the pet, then you are going to have that pet covered for anything going forward. And so even if you just have the coverage for a year, then at least you've given yourself time to find out if, if they've got anything going on. So pet insurance is is awesome. So make sure you've got a plan for that in place and uh, that you're happy with it so that you can feel comfortable that you can care for your dog even when just general health concerns arise. So of course, I don't want you to have to take on a dog uh, from a rescue that has things going on that you know nothing about. I think it's always best for us to be as informed as possible about the dog we're looking at adopting so that we can make those choices and we can know, can we afford this kind of um, chronic issue or whatever, um, as well as just knowing what we're getting into because some chronic issues will need a lot of maintenance. So uh, not all dogs are the same in terms of how much health uh, assistance they'll require in their life. And so if you're starting off the hop knowing uh, what they currently have or are at, then at least you're informed. So here are some of the tips on how to avoid adopting a dog with pre-existing health conditions. One, the breed. Think about the breed. So if you're looking for a specific breed, which I know sounds silly when you're t we're talking about rescue dogs, but now that we're seeing more purebred dogs uh, being purchased from puppy mills and uh, large mass breeding facilities, uh, we're seeing more of them in uh, dog rescues or shelters as well. So we are actually finding that we <laughs> Do see more specific breeds again rather than just the mixed breed dogs. So um, when you're looking for a dog and you have an idea of what you're interested in, 
you need to look up the common health concerns for that breed. So even if in general you want a mixed breed dog, that's that's great. I I highly recommend that because I do think that mixed breed dogs are in general a little bit healthier than the purebred ones. And so anyways, if you're looking at those dogs, then let's figure out what their common health concerns are for that breed. So uh, one of my favorite spots is um, Discovery Channel's Animal Planet. On their website, if you just search Discovery Animal Planet uh, dog breeds, then you get a list of dog breeds from A to Z, and you can look for that dog breed, and it will talk about some common health concerns uh, for that dog. So This really just makes you aware of the possible conditions that could arise um, and that can aid you in asking more specific health questions prior to adoption. So, um, for example, I knew some of the main health concerns for Dalmatians when I was considering adopting Rory. Some of those include bladder stones, allergies, blindness, deafness, epilepsy. So, All of those things were really on my radar when I was looking at her as a possible dog, and I was making sure to ask uh, further questions to the rescue about, you know, her diet and if she had shown specific symptoms of any of these conditions so that I could ensure that there wasn't anything I wasn't being told. And it also helped me watch for any signs of those conditions during the meet and greet. So obviously, blindness and deafness. I could definitely watch for that. Allergies. I mean, if I I could have watched to see if she was itchy, uh, scratching a lot while we were there or had skin condition, just little things like that. And of course, in a meet and greet, you're not going to get every single thing down, but it's just about being aware of it. So you can ask the right questions and, uh, certainly the rescue is going to love you for that because they know that you've researched that breed and they want you to be knowledgeable. And also you're just informing yourself of what could be coming down the pipe. And if you're very scared of having a dog with epilepsy, well, maybe you don't pick the purebred Dalmatian. (laughs) So that is up for you to make that decision. And now you're, you're better off for knowing that maybe you're going to change your mind about what breed you're looking into because of what you've seen. Um, so for instance, if you're looking at a dachshund, you might want to watch for or ask about any back pain or if they've, they've shown any signs of pain. Uh, dachshunds can have these really long backs and because of that uh, confirmation that they have, they are prone to getting intervertebral disc disease, which is a terrible, terrible scenario to be taking on and um Yeah, the longer, more extended their back is, probably the more likely they might have that sort of condition. So it's certainly worth watching for. Or even Shih Tzus uh, with their eye conditions. So Shih Tzus are really well known for getting glaucoma. And so if this Shih Tzu has like very prominent eyes, uh, A, you could be really concerned about prolapse and their eyes literally popping out of its socket because of how... um, how maybe shallow the socket is is, or how big the eye is, but then also glaucoma, you know, if the eyes look really large, maybe that's something that they might be predisposed to in the future. So, uh, that's not an easy thing to take on either. And maybe you're just, you know, going to watch for a Shih Tzu that has less buggy eyes so that maybe it'll be less of an issue. Uh, Boston Terriers or Bulldogs, any dog that is a brachycephalic, meaning they have like a short nose or a short head, is a, a dog that you should be looking at their nostrils, or their we call them their nares. Uh, look at their nostrils and check for their breathing status. Like, what's their ability to really take air in just from the size of their nostrils? If their nostrils seem especially tiny and like they're more like slits instead of, you know, circles, then that means that you might have some, um, bit brachycephalic syndrome issues to deal with, which of course that's a very common thing in that breed. So, uh, look up brachycephalic syndrome and, and elongated palates and, and all the conditions that can uh, cause issues there because 
those are those are very large issues and unfortunately super common. So um, that is something you should be watching for in that breed. And like another example would be German Shepherds. So uh, if you look up German Shepherds, you often see that they're predisposed to getting hip dysplasia, and that uh, one way you could be just simply assessing them when you you look at them is when they sit. Are their knees and, and legs completely splaying out by the side uh, if they're sitting on their bum? That means like their conformation's not really good and also means they might not have very good muscling there. And also, what, what do they look like when they're standing up? If there's an obvious slope there from their shoulders to their, their rump, then that's just probably going to lead to more mobility issues. It might not increase the chance of hip dysplasia, but uh, it will, it, it just means bad confirmation. And even you can just look and see how they're walking too. And sometimes if, if you feel like there's any concern about their confirmation, uh, which is just the way they present or the way that they move their body or their limbs, uh, then then that's just a good sign, a good thing to know that that might be coming down the pipe for us uh, with this kind of dog. And, you know, maybe we look for more of a mixed breed German Shepherd who's going to have a little less of those concerns because uh, they weren't uh, bred, bred to be in that condition. Tip number two is recent vetting. So only adopt a dog that has been seen by a veterinarian recently. Uh, reputable rescues will ensure that any dog they take in is up to date on vaccinations and spayed or neutered. So if you're reading a profile that says that they have not been spayed or neutered or that you have to do that, but there's like no incentive to do that, um, or that they couldn't get the dog in to see the vet and, and you'll have to do that, I would be very concerned about that and be just moving on to the next profile because really if they're a reputable rescue they're going to cover those things and they're also going to tell you what they cover so um, for instance there's the Labrador uh, Retriever Rescue of Ontario and they have a whole list of things on their website that they tell you they cover so they're very transparent about that and so that'll often include things like heartworm uh, testing and um, vaccinations, spay or neuter surgeries, sometimes dental procedures if needed. So it's it's really important to use a reputable rescue. But then also those occasions, you know, going and getting vaccines updated, uh, being spayed or neutered, require physical exams. And so that ensures that any health concerns that are observed are communicated with the rescue at that time by the vet and is a way to make sure that they've been checked over by a health professional. So not just the rescue saying, oh yeah, they're fine. It's the vet literally uh, gave them a clean bill of health. And again, a reputable rescue will not try and get a dog into a home that has a uh, health concerns that are uh, not dealt with. So for instance, I think uh, it was the Labrador Retriever Rescue that had a dog with thyroid concerns. So they they were like, well, we're going to have to hold this dog until we see that the dog is uh, being maintained by their thyroid medication, and then we can adopt the dog out. And that's just common sense. Another important thing here is to not just assume that they've had recent vetting, like, oh yeah, of course they they probably took the dog to the vet, or just by the fact that the dog uh, did get vaccines that that assumes that they had a full exam because you never know. <laughs> and if maybe the dog came from out of country, and again, they have different policies elsewhere. So really make sure to ask outright that the dog has been given a clean bill of health from a vet. And you should be getting their most recent uh, vet records with the adoption paperwork. And so they might not happily give that to you prior to the finalization of the adoption. But if they say clean bill of health, then you should be expecting that you're getting that paperwork when the adoption is finalized. 
Number three is reputable rescues. So we touched on this a little bit, but a reputable dog rescue will be upfront with potential adopters about health concerns in the dog adoption profile. This is because they have the rescue dog's best interest at heart, and they really just want to ensure that the adoptive family is ready and willing to take on any pre-existing conditions. So this is a scenario where uh, in the past, maybe people were a bit more concerned about the wool being pulled over their eyes by a rescue, but I think any rescue that has been around long enough has learned that that doesn't do them any good to get a dog in a home with someone who's not ready to take on uh, certain conditions because the dog will often just end up back in their lap in some shape or another. And they're really uh, looking out for the welfare of this dog now. And uh, things have taken a bit of a shift in the uh, dog rescue world. They're trying to put the dog first instead of the adopter. And that's that's the way it should be. So uh, check out my podcast on how to use Pet Finder and avoid Pet Finder scams uh, to find some of the criteria that will help you decipher what a reputable rescue is, because this is potentially the most important tip of them all is to make sure you're dealing with a reputable rescue so that uh, you can ask them questions. They're going to be upfront with you and uh, you have no concerns uh, going into finalizing that paperwork with them. And tip number four is use a checklist. A checklist uh, during your search and even during the meet and greet can help remind you to assess the rescue dog's health. Making a list of things that you know, if there's a specific breed and uh, you know that they have these common health concerns as you did some research, write them down and write down that what some of their common symptoms are. And then you can walk through some of those things following, you know, that first or second interview and you're actually now getting to hear all the details about the dog. Then that is the time to whip out the questions and don't be afraid to ask them because again, it does show that you um, are wanting to be prepared, knowing what you're getting into and that you have done your research and that should shine a good light on you. When you become a member of the Podoption Guide membership experience, you do get access to a detailed checklist that will walk you through what to look for during your meet and greet and what questions to ask before and during it as uh, in order to be as informed as possible before deciding to adopt a rescue dog. So just a reminder that my membership is launching soon in 2022 and you can join the waitlist if you're interested in hearing more by going to www podoptionguide.com forward slash membership waitlist. For now, um, make sure that you have these things on your checklist when you do the meet and greet. So uh, assess the dog's skin, hair, coat, eyes, ears, mouth, nose, feet, and their walk as I uh, talked about that German Shepherd. So their confirmation that can be super helpful as well. If you notice any or abnormalities, I know you're not you're not a technician. You might not, or a veterinarian, you might not know uh, as much what to watch for. But we're just looking for things that are grossly abnormal. So you know, lumps or bumps that you might have to have a fine needle aspirate done on, or or that maybe they have looked into and you just need to find out more about that. Um, or a, a, an inflamed ear, or, you know, even <laughs> something as simple as like a dog that has really long toenails. So why do they have really long toenails? Have they been to a vet? Oh, probably. So if they went to a vet, did no one trim their nails? And why is that? So even something as simple as that could help you understand, oh, they they absolutely are terrified of having their nails trimmed. And, and the rescue might not be trying to keep that information from you, but there's just a lot going on in these interviews and that, that they're trying to cover a lot of things and it's easy to, to maybe not uh, think of some of those as important factors, but certainly I want to be able to trim my dog's nails. So if I have a dog that's terrified of having its nails trimmed, at least I want to know that going into the adoption so that uh, it's 
it's less of a surprise and I'm willingly taking on the ownership of teaching that dog uh, a better way to have its nails trimmed or teaching that dog to be more calm when that occurs. So, uh, you know, again, it's just all about being informed. It doesn't mean you won't adopt that dog. So, for example, we noticed Rory had red bumps on her skin during our meet and greet, and I noticed it mainly in, like, her her underbelly area. And uh, I asked the rescue about allergies, and they didn't really have any concerns, and uh, it did not seem to bother her, so I I wasn't too concerned. It turned out to be like a bacterial skin issue, and uh, when we had her looked at from the vet, uh, once we got home, she was good as new following some antibiotics. So, uh, you know, that's a simple fix, but still costs money. So even just knowing that, okay, we're going to take her to the vet after we get her home, and that'll be something we sort out, it's okay to take on dogs with current conditions, but it's always better if we're aware of it, right? The truth is you can do all of these things and still find health concerns following adoption, but I want to drive home the fact that this is no different than the health concerns that could arise with a puppy. Reputable rescues have really improved in their transparency about health conditions as well as their response to health conditions. So whenever possible, they have usually started treatment or they have fully treated issues prior to adoption. And dog adoption has really come a long way in that regard. So uh, the best way to safeguard yourself from taking on a dog with pre-existing health conditions is to follow those tips. So, you know, know what breeds you're interested in and know what uh, their common health concerns are so that you can ask further questions to make sure that there isn't something that the rescue just hasn't shared or or didn't quite know about uh, so that you're prepared in that regard or that you can even change what you're interested in based on those concerns. And then uh, recent vetting, you know, making sure that they have seen a vet and that they're outright given a clean bill of health. And if not, what were some things that the vet noticed at the, the appointment? Using a reputable rescue so that you're not going to be lied to and they're going to be upfront about any health concerns and likely have done, you know, the vaccinations as well as a spay or neuter or any other d- procedures like a dental procedure in order to, again, give those opportunities for problems to be found and uh, to be uh, shared with you now that they've been found. And then lastly, a checklist. So having a checklist because it's easy in those scenarios when you're having interviews or you're having the meet and greet to just be caught up in the moment and not... um, not remember to do this or that, but if you have a list and you keep looking at it and you know you need to accomplish this list before you're done your visit, then you will make it happen. Uh, If you don't have a list and you just think you'll just remember in the back of your mind that you want to do this or that, you're likely to miss something. And um, those are ways that you can make yourself feel more comfortable about uh, the once over you've given the dog as well as what you've been told from the uh, rescue. So follow those tips I've shared with you today and, you know, get pet insurance. It is a wonderful thing. If you have a free trial that comes from either the rescue or the vet clinic that had looked at the dog, make sure to activate it. Do not forget to do that because I could tell you uh, a few stories about dog owners that didn't activate their uh, certificate, especially for puppies, and then immediately had an accident or an emergency health condition that needed to be sorted out that cost them so much money. But had they just had that Uh, pet insurance trial activated, they would have had so much covered and it would have been um, much less of a concern and, and a headache. So always activate the trial. After all, like being a responsible dog owner means being there for your dog through sickness and health. And Uh, Of course, we want to avoid uh, taking on a dog with a whole slew of issues that we don't know about. But the best way to care for our dogs is just to be by their side in these moments and have secure funds which support you in taking them to the vet whenever the need arises. 
I hope uh, this episode, you know, put your mind at ease and gave you some tangible ways to select a healthy rescue dog during your rescue dog search. Make sure to tune into the next one. Uh, New episodes are uploaded every Thursday. And if you enjoyed it, do me a solid and share it with your friends. Tell people about it. Take a snapshot of you listening to it on your phone, on your podcast platform, and post it on Instagram or Facebook stories and tag at Podoption Guide in it so that I can share with uh, my community as well. I love to hear your feedback, so feel free to get in touch with me on social uh, via Instagram or Facebook. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you in the new year.